Hi, so today we're here to talk about Azure Stack ASDK local installs. So you're gonna need a pretty big box to do this. Um, and this isn't really a walkthrough, it's just kind of an overview of what the steps are to make this happen. So when they happen, you have, uh, you know, you were expecting it. The Microsoft documentation is really good on this, but basically it's a step-by-step -step walkthrough and it doesn't give you kind of the macro flow of what you need to do. So the process itself is you have a Windows Server 2016, 2019, you're gonna drop a VHD on the disk, you're gonna reboot into that VHD and it's gonna install um, Azure Stack as a Hyper-V uh, VM inside of that uh, VHD. So I, I have kind of a chart here. The top half is what we're gonna do on the Windows Server host. So that would be like the Windows Server 2016 or 2019. The part in the red box is gonna be what actually happens in the Azure Stack virtual world. Right, so this is gonna be virtual on virtual, really. And I talked about this in another video, so I'm not gonna cover it here. Okay, so on the Windows Server host, right? So this is kind of the host that you're gonna do this on. In my case, I have a physical machine. You can do this in a virtual machine, do this whole process in a virtual machine. I found that super painful. You have to go hack up a bunch of scripts. The disk drives aren't supported. I, I mean, if you can make it work, more power to you. To me, it was just simpler to shove um, some bare drives in a machine that had the space. So as you know, with Azure Stack, you really need five disk drives. You need one for the operating system, which is also the Windows Server disk, and you'll need four data disks. Um, I think you could probably get by with three, three data disks, two spinners and a cache disk, but I haven't tried it. All right, so the first thing I would do, because I do that any other time, is on your host, probably set the host name to something you're gonna remember in case you wanna RDP into this thing later. So then you use uh, verify the compatibility of this machine using a script. I highly recommend this. It's gonna tell you if you have enough data drives, like you gotta have uh, four drives that have no partitions on them and are unmounted or they're offline to your Windows server host. Um, then you're gonna download uh, the Azure Stack downloader and run it. And that's basically gonna download 10 gigabytes of .bin files and then it's gonna assemble those into a VHD that's 40 gigabytes, all right? And that will be called cloudbuilder.vhdx. And so that is actually the virtual drive that you're gonna to use to do the build. So you're now gonna have like 50 gigabytes consumed on your primary drive. And then you're gonna copy cloudbuilder.vhdx to the root drive of your C drive, to the root directory, because we're gonna run a script and then it's gonna reboot the machine into that VHDX without actually booting the host operating system. In my case, I was way better off burning another 40 gig and pushing that thing into C drive as a copy because otherwise it took me like an hour to redo the download or redo build the um, VHD from the, uh, from the .bin files. But you don't have to, you could move it. Um, so then you run the install, download the installer program and uh, then you run, and the installer program is ASDK installer, that's a misspell, .ps1, we'll see if anybody notices. Um, and that will basically, all it does on the first go, it knows whether you're running on the host or inside Cloud Builder VHDX, it'll just add that to the boot partition, it'll reboot your machine, and you'll actually be booted into Cloud Builder VHDX as a direct uh, H uh, Hyper-B boot, right? So. That's what you do on the host machine. So after that's over, you're now booted into the Cloud Builder VHDX, right? And that's got some weird host name. I highly recommend that you set the host name here too, because in my case, I run this off on some physical machine in a closet somewhere, okay, behind the couch. And um, I, I don't wanna have to, and I wanna be able to run my regular laptop and then kind of RDP into this thing. So set a host name here, I highly recommend it. You also should load any additional drivers and disk drives for disk drives and graphics cards, etc. So my server that I ran this on, my HP Z820 Craigslist Special, um, that actually has two, it has SAS and two, um, two SATA controllers and I booted off of the SATA controller, but to get to all the data drives, I needed the HP drivers loaded and they don't come on that VHDX. So, if none of your drives appear when you boot from the VHDX, it could be because this is a minimal install operating system. It's a Windows server, but it's a minimal install on that cloudbuilder.vhdx. So you might have some drivers. Um, I also have a 
NVIDIA graphics card in that machine and it turns out the driver wasn't loaded and it didn't recognize my really wide display. So um, you might just have some work to do there. Oh, and I had a mouse driver to load. You probably have a similar thing. All right, so basically after that, all you're gonna do is you're gonna, um, so this thing booted up and there's also cloudbuilder.vhdx directory, right? You're gonna just open an uh, elevated PowerShell to that and run the installer script um, and what that's, and it's kind of the same, in, uh, same script, but it's in a different context, right? We ran it before to make the bootable drive. Um, so you're going to basically run this installer script and it is going to expand out this VHD. So it's going to get to 120 gig. So you already burned 10 gig on the bin files, maybe 40 gig on an extra copy of the cloud builder to see in case you blew this thing up and you got another 120, right? So my 240 gig root drive was plenty to do all this on. All right, so the installer is gonna run. So remember, we're booted in the VHD at this point. That's what this says right here. Um, all your data drives will vanish from the drive and partition manager because they'll all be subsumed into the storage cluster. And then it's gonna create like 10 to 12 VMs and start pulling and um, allocate disk drives in that storage cluster. And it's gonna start consuming your memory, right? So. The, you need like 96 gig of memory. I have 120 in mine. I don't think you can get by with less than 100, really. Especially if you're going to want to deploy anything, because it's going to deploy like 11 or 12. I don't know how many VMs in there and chew up all that space. And this process, I should have put a box around it. You're talking a few hours. And if it dies in the middle, you can actually rerun the script with a dash rerun. Um, but you're going to burn a few hours, so you just walk away. Uh, what I found was you just got to make sure you have the drives in place and some other things and you have enough RAM in the box. Otherwise you can get a couple hours in it. I mean, anyway, so that's where it goes. So the other thing, so when this gets done, you'll have a whole bunch of VMs open. If you look in the hyper V manager, um, and what I found is one of there's a control node that runs the whole thing. It's, uh, Azure stack ERCS one that thing's allocated four gig. If you run the test Azure stack command, it's going to fail actually with an out of memory error. So I highly recommend you jack this thing up. I think they, I don't know what the deal is with that, why the default isn't right. I had plenty of memory because I had like 96 gig allocated to this. And so jacking it from four to eight was no big deal. I probably could have done six or something, but I didn't really worry about it. So when that thing's booted up and you want to run the test Azure stack, there are a bunch of instructions floating around. Basically, you're on that box or you can be RDP'd into it. And then you open a PowerShell context, remote PowerShell on to that AZS ERCS01 node. And um, then you can actually run a command on there um, and it'll actually go exercise all the nodes and make sure they're all up. And if that passes, you're up, you're good to go. And then you can go to your Azure portal and we'll do another video on that. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. So like I said, you do part of this on the host, and then you do part of this on the booted VM. And I wish you all the luck. This thing's kind of cool.